Hey guys, welcome to what I believe is episode 10 in this series on the rebuild of probably one of the junkiest guitars I have ever had my hands on, the Galliano Archtop circa 1940. You'll never forget that, ain't that purdy, but we have fixed the neck, we steamed the neck off, we put it back on, we changed the angle on it, we fixed so many cracks, splits, tone bars, missing, detached, and it was so bad that we took the back of it off. Now, we are going to mate up the back, and I'm going to show you a few tricks, but there's a few things that we need to do in preparation to do that is finally sealing the patient up. We've got some soldering to do because we put the electronics in it. I've got some spruce material. We're going to go back to every place where we have chick flick teal fabric and cleat it. Of course, they're chick flick teal. Um, but there's a, a piece of metal, one piece of metal that I'm waiting on that I really need to get the wiring done and the surround on the pickup and the pit guard. And it never fails when you need that one piece. It doesn't get here. I didn't pay attention to where it was shipping from. Not that it would have mattered. I could only find one anyway. I'm not going to tell you what it is. And you're not going to tell anybody else, even though you don't even know. Shh. Anyway, we're waiting for that piece of metal. It's going to be part of the surround for the input jack, meaning I can't wire this from the inside. It's going to be around the pickup. I want to do a little surround. And then it's going to be, the main thing, is there something on it that makes it ideal for the pit guard that will also match the matchbooks. Yeah, I got all that done and ready to go on too. But I've got a couple of original... Uh, period correct pit guards that I can use as a template and we'll put that on there now We're going to spend some time on the bench making sure that we understand how important that everything that is here and on the back of the guitar gets leveled off Because if there are bumps and high spots and low spots once this all comes together guess what? you're going to have more splits than you ever had before. So we're going to talk about a cheap way to use some stick-on sandpaper, the right grit, and make sure that the mating surfaces, no, guitar mating surfaces, really are just right. We're going to look at that on the bench. We're going to make sure that our wiring is soldered up. Again, once that piece of metal gets here, show you how to do surrounds and get everything just right. We're getting close, but we really need to get close by getting to work on the bench. See you there. I know that this is getting really, really drug out, but I have something that will give you hope because it sure does give me hope. Again, we're waiting on a piece of metal that will help us with the pit guard. I want to do a surround around this pickup and the input jack over here needs something to reinforce it. But I told you I did the electronics early on and have you ever seen one of these? It's a spanner. Um, it's got teeth one side here, none here, vice versa here. But what this does is you can grab your potentiometer like so and then just this works great in prying off potentiometer knobs. It also works for checking your tuner nut, uh, nuts up on top of the headstock. Anyway, there's light at the end of the tunnel, people, because Ooh, tone. Yeah, it's alive. That's very promising. Now, as long as this pickup works, I don't care what happens with the, as long as the neck and the pickup work and the tail piece, I don't care what happens to the rest of it. But I just thought I'd share that with you. Let's flip this over. Oh, we're going to be talking about this 400 grit paper. It comes in rolls. It's fairly economical. It has 
um, adhesive on the back so you just peel off that covering and then we know that this top is ridged all over the place and we know that this ooh, uh, tunematic bridge has feet it doesn't have anything in the center but if we put that on there and start putting 56 and 58 and 60 strings as the big thumper string if everything isn't nice and smooth here we're going to have a point of stress and we're going to have another crack like we don't have enough here so that piece is here for this kind of stuff again i'm going to show you we know where the center is so you just take this back and forth until you get a mark as wide as this all the way across so there's quite a bit to do it doesn't appear to be that much on the surface but if you look real close and put a thin feeler gauge there's some gaps we don't want those gaps okay and there's going to be a lot of sidetracking here so let's just uh, get it out of the way while we're talking that way it'll be done later now while i'm flipping this over i am going to put a piece of metal around here it helps reinforce this but in order to do that and to wire this this is going to come through the wires are going to come through i don't like these kinds of of um input jacks if i can get away from it at all um, these come loose they're pretty flimsy when these come loose and then they start spinning around you lose a wire and that's the worst thing in an arch top so i got these pin end jacks i know that there's not going to be a strap button there but who cares but i'm going to reinforce this both inside and out and in order to do that i need that themed piece of metal that i keep talking about now we have done a lot on this body you can see that the bolt that uh, holds the neck on the T knot. We went that through that in episode. By the way, if you haven't uh, seen the other episodes, there is a I card popping up right there, right about now. There's a ton of stuff we've done. There's the electronics are here. Um, we've got some soldering to do, but again, I can't do that until that piece of metal gets here. Now. While we're in here, I talked about cleats. It's been a couple of weeks since this guitar has been apart like this, so I'm going to use some spruce. You see the grain runs this way. I make my repairs in Chick Flick Teal. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut strips like this, where the grain is running this way, and everywhere, front and back, where we have a crack, a split anything we've fixed both on the body of the guitar and everywhere else we are going to put cleats in we want to remember that this is concave and so we may have to take this to a belt sander and just round the edges off on the individual cleats and get them glued in of course we want to stay away from the edge so I've noticed that there's one split that started up here that we didn't have before so i've got some work to do with some fabric and get that done while we're here but the last thing i'm going to do is cleat all of this stuff use hide glue and make sure that it's solid anyway the big challenge here that i want to talk to you about is this guitar this part and this part need to line up and if you've got bumps and ridges and those kinds of things, what's going to happen is as, as it all settles, we're going to put it in a case when it's done and leave it sit in there with sponges. But where it all settles, when it all settles out and the hide glue uh, starts taking, if you've got, say, a bump right here that's taller than everywhere else, right here, so we can mark this up a little bit. If I had a pen, Chick Flick Teal can with the Love Pencil has abandoned me. But anyway, let's say we've got uh, a spot right here that's high. And this is not high and this is not high. I guarantee you what will happen is after a while, at the low spots, the splits will run here and here. And we don't want that. So, 
couple things we can do. You've never seen me use an orbital sander. Well, here's an orbital sander. It does this. Now, what you can do is take a couple of bean bags, get everything right where you've got a nice level surface, and just go along the edge like this. I'm not going to turn this on and vibrate everything, but you want to get this where all of this stuff is kind of disappearing, and it's nice and smooth to the touch. So an orbital sander works great for that. Let me get this out of the way now. Again, I have some soldering to do, but we're going to make sure that everything is okay. I'm also going to build a piece of wood going between this tone bar that had to be wallered out a little bit to make sure that the, these adjustment screws bottom out on a piece of wood so it can't ever fall through. But again, same thing. You take your orbital sander and go along the edge of this and get everything nice and smooth. You're not looking to take material off. You're looking to get it nice and smooth. You want to make sure, remember we had a kerfing repair. Somebody put in a piece there. Um, we've glued all this stuff. There's a little bit of glue on things. So this orbital sander will help you out. Now, the big winner here is you take a piece of cigar box guitar uh neck cut off or a two by uh, piece of wood and you take this 400 grit sandpaper just like you sanded the, the, the bridge down with to make it match the top of the soundboard or top of the guitar and you put this on here. This stuff works great for leveling frets, fingerboards, whatever you need to do. Uh, if you got radius stuff you want to do that but the main thing is, is you can take this if it's long enough, make sure it's long enough to go where it'll reach across the body at the widest spots. And then you just take this and go along. When you hear that, that, that noise where it sounds like something's wiggling back and forth, now's the time. You always have your hide glue uh, heater on in a syringe full of hide glue. You can go in there and then take a piece of binding tape if you find something and pull that in like this, remember, this is the time when you will get everything together. But anyway, you just go along like this until everything is nice and smooth like so. And you will be able to tell. It's really pretty simple. Um, you're going to see me, I have to... I ran a ground wire for the strings through the back. Let's see if I can show you here. It comes through the hole right here. It's bared. It's going to go on one of the screws underneath it so the tail piece will ground the strings. And then it comes through here and the ground wire coming off of the volume pot is here. So we'll ground this together um, and we will ground everything to that that needs to be ground and we will again once the piece of surround gets here we'll clip this off and make sure that this stuff gets put together i will give you a couple glimpses as we go here not too much talking this should be a fairly short episode um, we are starting to get really really close and we know that this thing makes sound already so moral of the story is there is light at the end of the F hole.
By the way, this is a file that's available from Stumac. You can see that there are no teeth on the edge of the file anywhere. You can basically do this with any file if you take it to your belt sander. And, but if you want to true this up, you take it to your disc sander on the, on the side of your belt sander and make sure that it's nice and true, uh, that your table is set right. And keep this true but it's great for knocking down stuff I have never found a better file that's easier to get in um, works great for binding channels or whatever anyway that's from Stu Mac All right, we've got another little crack that developed right there. It hasn't come all the way through yet, but while we've got the hide goo heater 
up and running we're going to make sure that this one doesn't go anywhere I want to make sure that we stay back from the edges there because we're going to glue right here this is where the back sits on top of the curving I'm going to make sure that we get all of this addressed. I don't want somebody to be back in here for another 80 years. All right, we'll set that off to the side for a minute. I want to show you here. I've got some little marks here. Those are where I want to put the cleats. So I've got a bunch of little cleats to cut. And I'm not going to bore you with all that. But I do want to show you a little trick. Now, I put a grid out. You can probably see it here. Um, but have you ever wanted to find the middle of something, but your ruler wasn't long enough or something? Hey, check this out. As long as I start something I can see has has markings on it. This is uh, an architect ruler, an engineer's ruler. Um, but say I want to find the middle of this. If I put the zero over here, like so, and then let's say I pick a number like eight, and I tilt it. Well, half of eight is four, right? And then I've got six and two. You see that? I can do the same thing down here. Zero. Make sure eight is there. I might mark four, six, and two. Now, see those marks? If I lay the straight edge there, and line up those marks. Like so. What do you know? I have exactly what I need. Now I can take the width of this and just do this. Two, three, Four. Now I can take these to the bandsaw. Can you see those marks on there? And I can cut these out, and I have all the cleats I need. See, I've got marks in here. Where's Chick Flick Teal Pointer? I don't need them being scabbed out by a pencil. But I've got three marks there, one there, one there, one there. And so I'm going to cut these. Now you want to remember the grain runs this way. If I put these cleats on and glue them on this way, if these start to open up and crack, then it's going to run. But if I turn the cleats this way, like so, and the grain is running this way, they will not crack. So I'm going to cut these. Now, I'm going to go to the belt sander also, and I'm going to watch my fingers, but each one of these, I am going to buzz down the end of it just a little bit on both ends so I get a curve like this rather than being flat because some of this is curved. See you in a minute. Okay, we have a whole bowl of these now. Again, the grain is running this way. If we put the cleat on this way and this cracks, it won't resist it. So we got to put the grain is running this way uh, So and the crack is running this way. So we're just going to dampen each one of those where there's a mark. We've got quite a few of these here. And then we're just going to take our hide glue, daub it on a mark like this. Again, we want to make sure that we're not too close to the edge. Again, the grain 
is running against this. So we will just set that right there like so. And we've got an assembly line running here like that. I think you get the idea. Now if I'm going to turn this over or do anything like that, I've got my little tape dispenser here and we can just put that like so. This thing is great for binding tape. I've got a bunch of these to do, both inside the body and on the back here. I'll catch up with you in a little bit. All right, there we go. Set this flat somewhere else where they don't drift. And we'll do these and knock this part out. Glue this in as well. I will tell you what, that is a lot of cleats. Waiting for glue to dry. I swear, I think I've discovered a new disease. It's called chick flick teal pox. Do you see it? Yeah. Alrighty then. We've got to let some stuff dry. Last little tip I want to give you before I forget is this. When we start gluing the sides up and the back and all of that, the last thing we want is for to get done and find out that the glue has run, the hide glue has run all the way down here. So we're going to take some time now and we're going to go along the edge. And you want to watch the guitars if it's a nice guitar. This is not a nice guitar. For the price that someone will pay for it, you would think it is, but no, it's not. So you're going to take some low tack tape. And we're just going to put this and cover everything on the side there. Again, use low tack tape. If you do this on a Gibson and there's any heat coming from anywhere, you are going to have a trashed finish. So, we'll just go along like this. We want to be able to see the edge, but make sure that any bleed off is here. And you're gonna to wanna to take a marker, 
Remember your lineup, your alignment marks. They're on this tape right here. Put those on the inside so you can get everything back together like so. Okay guys, it's time to hot rod this thing up, meaning it's wiring and solder and all that kind of thing. So a couple things I want to show you, you've seen in my videos before. Have a solder stand that holds your gun. Make sure that there is a piece of sponge in this thing that's wet. Now, when your soldering iron is hot, there's a couple things you want to do. You want to run it through the sponge because any solder or trash that's on there will burn off. And before you get going, you want to make sure that you take a file like so and clean up your solder tip. And then between every joint you solder or wires, whatever you want to call it, you take advantage of this sponge. Watch out for the sponges that are made out of synthetic material. They release gases sometimes that you don't want to smell. Don't ask me how I know. Of course, get the right solder. You'll see people soldering with solder that isn't meant for this electrical kind of work. They're using plumbing solder. That doesn't work out. Now, Tammy and I will sit down sometimes and we will cut shrink wrap. I am a firm believer in shrink wrap. I'm not a firm believer in spilling this on camera, but you can see I have all different kinds and sizes. We got stuff that's for small wires. We got stuff that I can use to make a harness, but these are different colors for a different reason. I'll kind of go through that a little bit here, but keep this closed. Pick what you want. The last thing you want to do is spill this thing, and then it's going to be a nightmare, but keep it closed. I also have a drill bit container that every time I don't close it, I spill it. But here's kind of the idea. When I'm putting wires together, I've got a little piece of shrink wrap right here. When I solder that connection, I'm just going to bend it over, and that one's already soldered, and then I just slide this over and put the flame to it. When I hook the ground wire up, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to slide a ground wire down here and make the connection and put that together. And then I've got this big piece of wire uh, of shrink wrap over here. When it's all together, I will cover this whole thing. And then we'll take a look at bundling this up and getting it fairly close to the F hole because if I ever have to fish this out, I'm going to want to know where it is. So it's on um, the uh, potentiometer side of the coil. This one's pretty easy. Um, this is a pre-wired harness. There's a ground wire coming off of the top of the potentiometer, the volume pot, not the tone pot. It's all hooked up. Everything's hooked up. And then all I have to do is basically put these two together. This one goes to grounding the strings. Remember, if you are putting um, a pickup on an arch top that has never had strings, you're going to have to hook uh, the ground wire to the strings, and that usually goes to the tailpiece. But again, I will put the appropriate color that I want here, on here like so. And then, well, actually, let's do that the other way around. I'll put the big one that's going to cover all the connections on first. Then I will put a small one because this is a ground. And I will hook these together. I want you to notice I love using pushback wire. It's got cloth covering on it. So you just grab a piece of your wire like so. And when you want to solder it, you push back. And then after you make your connection, you can actually slide it back up. This is good stuff. It's called pushback wire. So I'm going to solder this up. I've already tested it with the tap test. You heard that in another little episode. But I'm going to get this soldered up and then I'm going to take a look at it. Again, I'm still waiting. I've been waiting for something from uh, Italy theme to show up so I can do the surround and stuff. So I am not going to hook up the um, 
the input jack wire, but it's pulled through the body there. So let's watch me solder a little bit. Okay, guys, last thing here. These wires are all um, a little too long. I've got the one going over to the uh, input jack. We're going to leave that one alone um, because that piece of plating has to come in for the surround. But now that I've got all these together, of course, I've tested them with the trusty screwdriver, but I've wadded those up in a little loom there. I'm going to use one of these little miniature cable ties and I'm going to keep this all together I'm going to make sure that there's enough slack where I can pull this to within reach of the F hole just in case I ever need to do any work on the wiring or somebody else does because if you don't pay attention to that kind of stuff people will cost you there's a lot of people who will not work on F hole guitars just because they're nearly impossible to get access to. So we're just going to cut that off. We're going to make sure we don't cut our wiring. And then we've got this one coming off of the pickup. We're going to get this out of the way again. This is the shrink wrap that I've made sure everything is together. We've got enough slack there and again we'll take one of these get it turned the right way pop it there I'll tell you what wiring a, an arch top with F holes is like putting a starter on a 66 Mustang and I'll tell you what if you're doing it in the winter time the snow plow is always going to come by when you've got the thing up on jacks and plow you in you have to dig yourself out yeah I know okay there we speaking go speaking of chick flick T.O. Pox very serious outbreak here but in all reality this thing still flexes it does what it needs to do but there's no cracks now the time has come where we're going to put this. Ooh, isn't that purdy in there? Let's make sure we don't have any scrap or Addison here that we got to do the F hole shake and bake move on. But we're going to put the back on now. The problem is, is if I try to do this all in one shot, notice I have these little marks here uh, that we put in place. But I'm going to start back here, and I've got the hide glue heater going on. But we are going to pin this down in about four spots and only four spots and we're going to leave the rest of it loose because you're going to see that as we work this thing over we're going to have to pull the body in the sides in and get things lined up so we're going to do a rough line up here and then these little cheap clamps which are very cool you just pull this down and slide it anywhere you want but these are big enough 
to get onto an arch top and they've got rubber clips on it. Now I want to remind you that we have taped off the sides of the guitar everywhere because when the hide glue seeps out, we're not going to want to scrape everything off. But we are ready as soon as that hide glue heater decides to help us out. Okay, guys, it is the moment of truth. The hide glue heater has done its job. And you'll notice that I have some pieces of binding tape that are attached to the side, which is again covered with masking tape, but they're laying down like this. And I am going to go right to this point right up here. We are not going to glue the whole thing up because... It would be a nightmare to try to keep everything together. We're just going to go on here. The nice thing about hide glue is if you heat it up, it gives you some working time. Don't just squirt it right out of the bottle. That's not going to work. Okay, and it's not going to hurt to get a little bit where it's running over the curving. We don't want it to slop all over the place. We're going to make sure that our wires and things are out of the way. But we spent some time going along and making sure that everything is smooth. There's nothing in the way. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to go along the side here. Now, the deal with the binding tape is that when we're trying to line this up, this body and the edges and sides and everything is going to try to kick back on us because it's been free of each other for a little bit and before that it was cracked and warped and displaced so we've done a lot of things that are going to want to make this thing not do what we want it to do and a nice thick layer on here Again, don't use hide glue right out of the bottle. You're killing yourself. It, it's got to be nice and warm. It should flow pretty good there. We want to make sure that our cleats aren't in the way and get all that out of the way now. So we're going to flip this over. And we're going to watch the sides very carefully. We have a wet rag. Okay. And we're going to go up here to where these marks are, up here, and get those kind of in the right spot. If we know those are going to be okay up here, the thing won't be off center. But we're going to come down here, right there, and we're going to take a piece of this binding tape. Got a little bit of squeeze out there already. We can just do this like so. Pop it there snug. Come over to the side. Push that in a little bit. Again, get rid of the squeeze out as necessary. Your fingers are going to be all sticky, that's for sure. But we're only going to glue this thing up to here. You can tell that this side is starting to stick out a little bit. There's our squeeze out. Ooh, that didn't like that. There we go. Now we're going to let this tack up just a little bit and again we're going to come up here and even though we're not gluing this part up here we're going to make sure that this wants to stay in shape up here. Again this binding tape dispenser is the most awesome thing. Get a couple pieces of tape up here like so. We're going to let that start to set up. And then we'll come down here 
and take these clamps. These clamps are pretty handy. You just squeeze them or pull this part. We're gonna and they're they're padded on both sides. I could use spool clamps too, but then I just do that. It's not gonna take a lot of pressure. It's a matter of getting this lined up. See you in a bit. Hey guys, welcome back to 18 Hours Later. That didn't make any sense unless you're in Lakewood, California, tomorrow's city day. I got some stuff to show you, but the important part is when I left you last, we had glued up this part of the bottom of the guitar. We had put the back on it. And we're doing this in sections to allow this to adjust to itself, freaking out of being bent and twisted every way. Now, before we do the next part, I have some cool stuff to show you. This knot amongst them. Do not worry about this yet. Okay. Do you know what a cigar box looks like? Well, I'm not talking about when you wouldn't make a a cigar box out of guitar blah blah blah, blah rented lifts this is the one I would make a cigar box guitar out of a Camacho 60 by 6 of course that's the only kind I use but every once in a while I run across one of these and if you open them up you see that there's this lining here that you can break out before you throw the rest of it in the fireplace to warm yourself and you can take those and you can cut them into manageable sections and you can bevel the ends. And then you put dowling, dowling, not Kevin Dowling Fitness Hour. Do you know what that is? If you don't, I will show you right here. This is one of the mysteries of life you can't miss. But you drill two holes, you put doweling in there, and then you pick this edge up that's still loose, like so, and pop this in. The dowels stop the thing from jumping inside the arch top guitar. Again, if you're working on arch tops, the worst thing that can happen is stuff falls inside, and then you're playing the shake and bake, trying to get it out. So, the high glue heater is going. We've got this bridged up here, and we're going to pop this up just a little bit to get a palette knife and a brush in here, and we're going to coat this. Now, once that is done, we're going to take a look. We're going to let it dry up just a little bit, and then we're going to look and see how these sides line up. I have Mr. Super Duper Clamp here. I don't use steel ones for this because sometimes... One little twist and the whole guitar is gone. But this is going to be a problem area. There's a little bit peeking out. And this is sticking out this way. So if I put this here and get those pulled over just a little bit and tighten everything up a little bit more like that, then I can go ahead and put my hide glue in and pop some more of these clamps. I like these clamps. Um, spool clamps are pretty sturdy. You make one wrong turn or a metal clamp and you've got a problem. So you've seen me do this before. I got a ton of these and we'll work up to about this spot, let that dry, and then get the most important part because this needs to line up with the neck. If this is off this much, again, I've told you your neck angle suffers. So see you in a bit. Okay, guys, before I forget here, this glue syringe, you can't beat it for this because remember, we've got parts of this glued up already to right here. And so when we use this gadget I showed you here and drop it in there, it's going to get us a gap that we can pull up a little bit. We don't want to do that too much. So we'll take our glue syringe and just lay a bead of glue right in here like so until we get to the point where we can take our knife our little palette knife and just go along in there and smear that glue and you can see that it's on there of course we got our wet rag and we'll be good to go so I'll go all the way around here working it I'm gonna get up to this point 
and stop for the evening and then we'll finish this one up in the next one but there's going to be a lot of again using these clamps and then using a big clamp to get rid of this gaff we see right there and to twist the body around like that you see okay so we'll do this until we get up to about this point and over here we'll save all that for the next round and I'll catch up with you at the end when I got it all clamped up and done and we'll close it out then all right guys you thought we we're gonna end up at the bench for one more round of clamps up here in the top one third ish area is that what you thought well I thought Santa Claus the Easter Bunny and the Tooth Fairy are gonna be at my house tonight too but they're not so if you were really dependent on that I'm sorry you're so fragile and I will get uh, Brenda Lee out here to sing I'm oh, sorry to you but in all reality here's what's happening we made sure that everything down here was lined up but this up here is not going to line up in fact there's going to be a little bit of the top of this sticking out past where the top of the sides meet and why is that it's very predictable I've told you how fragile this is. So right now, I can look at this and I can move this. Can you see that? It's moving this much. So I'm going to take a piece of straight edge that's metal. I'm going to lay it across here. I'm going to clamp it here like Ellie Mae clamp it, that kind of clamp it. And I'm going to put the bridge here so the straight edge hits the top of the bridge. I'm going to secure that. And when that happens, this neck will rotate down just a little bit. And then I will mark this. And then we will finally glue this up. Now, why is it sticking out here? Why is it going to stick out a little bit right there? Well, because if this rotates down and the rest of the body is in shape, when the bottom of the tailpiece rotates down, the top rotates up. It's just like a teeter-totter. And once that's secure, it's going to come up with a difference here that we're going to have to trim off. And it's predictable. Do you know how much? There's an odd relationship. This is where math becomes reality. We don't need all those backslashes and numbers and, and, and letters and all that. This part right here will be equidistant or the same as where the angle of this shim levels out with this part because we have taken this up at an angle and it only makes sense that that angle is going to resemble something here. So I'm going to get this done. I'm going to wrap it up. No sense in you watching it go. But I think I'll start the next episode. We're getting close. This has all come together. It's pretty solid. I, it sounds terrible, but it's not broken. I will see you in the next episode. Don't forget to give me a like if you have not. And stick with me. Again, we have, we're getting way at the end. There's a bunch of episodes before this and any junk arch top that you run across, we're going to cover or we have covered just about anything that you could encounter. Remember, life is like a teeter-totter. Watch it. I might drop it. See you soon.